let's start with an informal poll. Raise your hand if you've eaten food off the floor. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now, raise your hand if you didn't raise your hand. <laughs> and you were lying. Uh, next poll. Who has eaten damp food off the floor? <laughs> like a watermelon slice or jello? Yeah. You're out? All right. All right. Okay, okay. Last one, be brave. Who's eaten food that their father found in the gutter on the side of the road when she was 10? No, all right. When I was 10, I ate a crushed but still hermetically sealed package of Hostess cupcakes that my father found on the side of the road. But there was context. There's always context. Mark, my biological father, had context of his own. He was, on the one hand, a man who married an 18-year-old, dropped out of college, produced a daughter, and later blocked that daughter's mother from leaving the house when she decided that being married to a lunatic was no longer for her. <laughs> On the other hand, his family was a real treat. That is to say that growing up Mark was no hostess cupcake. Those roadkill cakes had context too. My father had been out running when he saw them with their signature white icing swirl lying on the curb, practically unmangled. It was not something he'd normally bring me, what with his diabetes and his eternal hatred for both enjoyment and fat people. <laughs> Add to that that he was the cheapest bastard alive and there's no way he would have bought me cake. Especially not a name brand snack cake. This was mana from heaven, if heaven were a 24-hour convenience store. So when he returned to the small apartment that he lived in, one that I was legally obligated to visit every other weekend and each summer, he gave me his treasure, and I ate it. When a crazy man brings you gutter cakes, you eat them. <laughs> you eat them standing in the living room while he watches. You thank him, and you ask him to tell you again how he found them there and thought, I bet Nicole would enjoy eating trash. <laughs> I bet you think you would have said no to my father, but you didn't refuse my father, not because he would have beaten me or locked me in a closet, but because I would have had to endure his unending disappointment. His was a disappointment that was only exercised on the wind of a heavy sigh after hours of silence and shunning. Plus, I like cake. <laughs> Let's revisit that poll. Have you ever done something in context that you would never consider in any other circumstance? Remember that honesty leads to emotional freedom. <laughs> Another thing that leads to emotional freedom is death. When my father died, I was 20 and I was free in a fashion, free to make my own decisions about my adulthood. Decisions about things like keg stands, finishing college, dating seriously, bills, jobs, trendy haircuts, legally binding marital union, home ownership, taxes, credit card debt, diet fads, table, cable TV service providers, pets, and children. Well, kind of free. Because for better or worse, the framework laid by my father would factor heavily into my choices. The truth is, though, it's not enough to be on the brink of adulthood with the absence of poor parenting. A young person, especially a daughter, needs the ongoing influence of a high-quality parent, especially a father. You know, daddy issues. But how does one identify a high-quality parent? A high-quality parent smiles often, revels in your triumphs, expects better of you and helps you to achieve it, and does not pilot the car with his knees while rolling a joint on the highway. <laughs> a high quality parent avoids DUIs. This is not to be confused with choosing to become a parent. Idiots successfully make this decision with little more than an available sex partner and a fifth of vodka. Sure, erstwhile parents will read a few books and ask around, but the choice to parent is less about securing offspring and more about rearing them. Because once that kid arrives, life gets overwhelming and precious and wonderful and terrible all at once. And we realize that parenting is a series of choices, constantly shifting, demanding, urgent choices. A quality parent, one who lets you stay up late to bond over cookies and milk, but also insists that you brush your teeth before going to bed, one that helps you tour college campuses, but nods thoughtfully when you say you want to be a mime? That's a quality parent. 
He can be scared and confused. He can even hate it sometimes, but he's all in. And so, even though he loved me and he did in his own way, my Mark was not up to the choosing, but my Kevin is. Because sometime between the day my mom divorced my dad and the day she said I do to Kevin, he showed up and made a choice. He met me when I was six and he was Kevin. And by the time I was 16, he was daddy. When my father was holding grudges against me and giving me the silent treatment because, and this is a quote, you don't love me the right way. My Kevin was talking with my mom about having more kids and saying, we already have a daughter. We have Nicole. Kevin taught me that boys are indeed checking out my legs <laughs> and that I should be both proud and wary. He taught me that his disappointment over my actions is completely different than his disappointment over my being. He taught me to love and laugh and listen to the important people in my life. The only thing more consistent than his love and support is the ticking of time itself. It occurs to me now as a parent that biology has nothing on commitment. The quality parent commits to the whole package and renews that commitment nearly daily. Long after the diapers have been moldering in a landfill and the tantrums of tweendom have ebbed, there will be an adult child who will look back and remember that you, Daddy, were there in the thick of it all. And those times will be the touchstones along that grown-up child's path that help her navigate bills, jobs, legally binding marital union, cable TV service calls, and even her own parenting choices. So, informal poll. Would you choose a different dad? For my part, I couldn't have picked a better father, but then I never had to because Kevin chose me.